Led Zeppelin, Ozzy Osbourne, and even wrote a song about China. Today's music industry commercializes satanic themes without concern for the soul of the Even though fans have the most hardcore faces, deny that they are Satanists, but admit that Satanists themselves and that they are simply giving their fans what they want to hear. Many fans get their ideas from Palestine and Syria, which is explicitly depicted satanic rituals, death, murder, and cruel tortures. Evidence shows the music late late satanic overtones has played an important role in the lives of many of the teenagers who have been convicted of satanic killing. Nightstalker Richard Ramirez, obsessed with the music of the rock group ACDC, admitted that their lyrics have influenced his main opinion. And it started out with music, you know, and not all rock music, most of the lyrics like the black metal or the deep metal type of band, where they have the heavy satanic type overtones to the music. Groups such as Venom, Slayer, Merciful State, these are bands that are lately teaching these kids that there is a cultural practice. practices. Use whitewash liberally and to cover up any signs of any shades of black magic at all that are in the new order. And there are many other orders who put on this front of being fairly innocent, but actually when the people are involved and initiated, they see that they have been trained into prostitution, in pornography, as well as into Satanism itself as a religion. Involved in Satanism, we basically recruited from the teenage years, but today it's becoming very apparent that uh, they are trying to get children at a very young age and this is done partially through the use of the media whether through things like um, cartoons which begin with with ideas that there is good magic and there is bad magic and it's okay if you use the good magic and well i didn't know who lucifer was because i didn't have a christian background but it said if you pray this prayer for a month then you will get everything that you want and more Satanism gives you a sense of power. It gives you a feeling that you have power over your own life. Of course, it's the ultimate delusion because actually what you have done is you have totally surrendered control of your life. This is eliminated. I was blindfolded, um, taken to the Satanist temple. And when I got in there, I was astonished to say the least. There was about 400 people or more. They stood and were worshipping um, the devil. There were effigies of Satan, half man and half beast around the walls. Um, there was a high altar, and on the altar, um, there were cups and knives. The chief Satanist sat on the throne-like seat. Even. One of the more powerful rituals in Satanism is the Black Mass, a parody of the Catholic Mass in which the text is said backwards and in which many other sacred Christian traditions are mocked. Uh, which involved me being naked, spread eagled on a low plinth. Um, I had a candle in each hand. One of the other priestesses was a nun, dressed up as a nun. Uh, she had to wee into a bucket, and that was used to asperge us. Uh. After just the first ritual, we were moved to throw every effort into the successive workings. With this little baby, and at first I didn't realize it was a, a, a real baby, and she just laid it on the altar. It was breathing, but it wasn't crying. And then the high priest just took the athami, or the ceremonial dagger, and just cut the baby's throat, and caught the blood in a chalice. At that point, I, I was staggering, really. I thought I was just going to, to throw up. I couldn't believe it. I, um, on this earth, to promote Satan and Satan worship and uh, that witchcraft, I'd have a, a greater a place later on when Satan himself um, would rule on the earth. John Bonet Ramsey. I 
did not have anything to do with it. I did not kill my daughter, JonBenet. The grand jury is hearing the evidence in secret, but now we reveal startling new evidence that our sources say police found. A child's scream on the fateful night, a surprising voice on the 911 call, something mysterious about the ransom note. Are these clues that could help unmask a killer? You look at something and you figure out who wrote it, in essence. Yes, yeah, so that's what I do best. And, for the first time on television, an exclusive interview with the lead detective who just quit the case. Do the police know who killed John Benny Ramsey? Elizabeth Vargas, with provocative details you've never heard before. What happened to Jean Benet Ramsey? The perfect murder? To Jean Benet Ramsey. The perfect murder? What happened to Jean Benet Ramsey? The perfect murder? Please, if you know anything, I beg you to call us. Call us. Police find it significant the $100,000 award has never been collected. Challenge the credibility of Donald Foster, who analyzed the text of the ransom note. And they told us they believe it's easier to hear a scream in the basement from across the street than from the Ramsey's third floor master bedroom. The murder of Jean Benet Ramsey consumed his life. So why did this detective suddenly up and quit the case and his job? He'll tell you tonight. In um, we are not at a point where we are prepared to rule anyone out or rule anyone in as a potential suspect. We are going to follow the information in this case wherever it takes us, Dan. So you've got 216 million Americans as suspects right now? But such skepticism was rare in the media coverage of the Ramsey cases. John Bennett Ramsey, liable for the wrongful death of John Benet Ramsey. John Ramsey, liable. <laughs> and as to Patsy? We the jury find Patsy Ramsey liable for the wrongful death of John Benet Ramsey. We have had everything in our lives, Scout. I mean, they have talked with my fourth grade teacher, my, you know, friends from elementary school, I mean, there's nothing. I don't have a clue who Kimberly Ballard is. Have you ever spoken to Kimberly Ballard? No. Ballard? Have you ever met Kimberly No. Ballard? Did you ever speak on the phone? No. She's not a close friend? No. <laughs> Certainly not now. <laughs> well, maybe those in the media who never seriously investigated whether they might be innocent. If we were normal, American family. I went to work every day. Patsy stayed home to be with the children. Uh, and then yet, America thinks that we, uh, after a wonderful Christmas with our children, uh, we were planning to go meet my older children uh, for a second Christmas. We had bought and paid for reservations on the Disney uh, Red Boat, which was going to be the first cruise we ever went on a family, as a family. And yet, the American public has been led to believe that while we went to bed that night after Memorial Christmas, uh, brutally beat John Bonet, sexually molested her, strangled her, went to sleep, got up the next morning, wrote a three-page ransom note, uh, called the police, sat around the house for four hours, then I went downstairs and discovered her body, and was able to act distraught. Patsy was able to throw up that morning because of gut-wrenching anxiety. She faked it.
In America, no one dies, they have conspiracies. Elvis is alive, you know, and nobody can actually get better looking. They have to have 8,000 pounds of plastic surgery. It's like, well, what do you mean? Uh, best advice I could give to Scary Spice about having her first baby. Don't think that you're smoking. <gasps> back and forth in the media has raised the question of just how much credit Corgan deserves and how much credit is being denied one of Courtney's bandmates. I mean, somehow cut off his testicles, split them up between each other, and devoured him. Devoured, 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 devoured. I mean, somehow cut off his testicles, split them up between each other, and devoured him. Devoured, 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 devoured. I understand. Um, I understand. Somehow cut off his testicles, split them up between each other, and devoured him. Devoured, devoured. So there might be something, Chris, actually to that succubus theory about succubus theory about it. I think. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do. I do. I do. And we're gone. And we're thriving. And we're thriving. We're thriving. And. And good evening and welcome uh, to our program. And uh, we don't often uh, give these things explicit written themes, but uh, tonight I thought we would just uh, forthrightly, once and for all, take on a particular theme. Uh, which is to ask the uh, distinctly non-musical question is Courtney Love a Satanist? And you see we're still stuck with the uh, same old keyboard year after year here. I had no idea that the uh, Satanist thing got uh, stuck to the ACDC band. In fact, I was uh, watching um, Will Success Spoil Rock Hunter on one of the cheap cable uh, stations the other day, and they uh, had uh, Jane Mansfield uh, in a bathtub with her uh, with her maid and uh, her housekeeper, and the housekeeper brought up. Uh, strange line that I'm not sure what the double entendre was uh, in the 1950s when the film was made, but uh, uh, the line was, you know, some guy that gives you that wonderful warm ACDC feeling. And uh, I didn't uh, 
I never detected any <coughs> distinctly um, satanic elements in the music of ACDC. I'm mostly familiar with them from that uh, great video uh, shot in Paris, I think, with their original singer Bon Scott, uh, which is uh, Let There Be Rock, which is great fun, and uh, as far as I know, not uh, Beelzebub laden at all. And uh, so I'm surprised uh, that that uh, is something that got stuck to uh, one of those uh, California killers. I guess he's probably looking for a wide demographic for uh, prison cell mail. But uh, the serious subject uh, that we uh, do want to address, at least briefly here tonight, is one that you know has been on our mind for uh, over four years and has existed as the stuff of rumor uh, for at least that long, and that is, you know, the obvious question, which is, uh, you know, what was the motive for the crime above and beyond money? And uh, if uh, Courtney Love was the perpetrator of the crime, you know, where did she, uh, where did she get the gumption? And uh, besides the uh, general theory that it was a sort of sanctioned hit, uh, really, in the long run, what gave her the overwhelming confidence, if she's the guilty party, to uh, go through with what she did? And in fact, I think in that uh, MTV uh, interview, she even used the word hubris, H-U-B-R-I-S, and then she broke into a uh, sort of childlike uh, tantrum, talking about how uh, even the use of the word made her somehow too smart to be on TV. But it really is a hubris or hubris that uh, uh, we do attach to her, and uh, in uh, you know nearly supernatural quantities, you might say. Um, just to give this thing context, you know, we ran some of what you might call a shockumentary there uh, to put you in the right frame of mind. And uh, the shockumentary was uh, actually aired here in the last month or so on uh, Channel 29. And I don't know what the motives were of the people who uh, aired it here. It's obvious that the, the people that produced the film um, well, if you see the whole thing at the end of it, the uh, the solution to all of this Satanism in the suburbs thing is to have uh, you know parents object to their uh, kids spending any time on their own and uh, you know follow them around like uh, you know mad stalkers or whatever, making sure they're not uh, being swallowed up by the local uh, Satan movement. And uh, I would I would actually not disparage the entirety of the theory of uh, organized evil. Uh, in the big cities or the suburbs or, you know, great masses of people uh, following some idiotic uh, creed with uh, its own sort of uh, Saturday morning cartoon type uh, ceremonies attached to it. And of course, uh, you know, it is a subject which has been studied academically and uh, you never know quite what to believe about these uh, outrageous tales of murder and mayhem in history, but uh, the attachment uh, to the uh, sort of Coca-Cola of evil, if we want to call the Satanism that, is such an obvious thing that you expect people with obvious minds to uh, generate toward that sort of uh, obvious conclusion as to uh, you know what their uh, motives for conducting themselves as they do might be. So the idea of Courtney Love being some sort of a Satanist has certainly been uh, on the uh, on the agenda of things to examine uh, for several years and uh, it's the sort of thing that uh, we have never brought up I don't think very distinctly uh, because we don't want to be in this realm of uh, you know the PMRC uh, conservative Republican political group you know finding Satan under every rock and roll rock. But, uh, you know, the s uh, symbolism which uh, Ms. Love employed, uh, especially very recently uh, in her appearance at the uh, MTV Video Music Awards at uh, Universal Studios in Burbank uh, last month, actually is uh, quite heartening for us in terms of uh, her displaying a distinctly OJ-like behavior throughout. That is, uh, you would figure that uh, with MTV accepting them, her band, and her into their 
warm embrace by really playing them up as the featured performers in that very heavily hyped uh, Celeb Fest, the Video Music Awards, that she was finally all in the clear, finally really had uh, gotten out ahead of her past. And then what do you find the wid doing uh, at uh, long last when she reaches uh, her goal of clearing herself of uh, you know, the bad days in the sea town, just jumping right back into the nonsense with, uh, as I say, distinctly OJ-like behavior, which would really lead anyone to believe that uh, she is uh, either seeking to perpetuate this uh, murder myth around her husband's death for publicity purposes, or, in fact, um, she does suffer from what uh, psychologists uh, refer to in uh, in, in developing children as, as uh, the uh, reality testing complex, except, uh, of course, in, in the uh, case of someone who may be guilty of uh, a heinous felony, uh, you can imagine the person making these outrageous statements just to sort of clear the way. There's really nothing else more outrageous that she could, that she could possibly say other than she's you know, a practicing cannibal or you know, if you think that's just fun and games, you know, consider the implications of her comparing herself at length in that most recent interview only last week to Joan Crawford, who, you know, that uh, film Mommy Dearest is something of a camp classic because it is over the top, but at, at its heart is a really brutal story of a uh, psychotic screen actress who... Uh, is a, a serial child abuser, which of course is something that Courtney Love is uh, known across the world for. She even reiterates her claim to the title of serial child abuser uh, by reminding folks of uh, the photograph that was taken of her uh, smoking when she was going to be featured in Vanity Fair magazine, which makes her uh, beyond a child abuser, it makes her a uh, fetus abuser. And, uh, you know, there's really no telling that uh, she may continue her career along those lines. Anyway, it's, uh, if you look at the symbology that's associated with this most recent album, her wearing the Inri uh, shirt, that's uh, perplexing, but it does fall into a sort of satanic pattern of uh, ridiculing uh, the uh, motif of uh, Christian worship. And uh, she did refer to the album as uh, Holy War. This was the title for the album that she wanted. They're standing in front of like a burning cross, which is a bizarre sort of amalgam of, uh, you know, I don't know what, clan sentiments, pagan sentiments, whatever she's uh, out to try to symbolize. And again, uh, it's, it would be, it's taken me four and a half years to even come up with this subject because it's something I wanted to avoid completely because it is the sort of thing that can subject the critic to ridicule. That is, uh, alleging that uh, a serious crime was committed uh, by someone uh, believing that they are in league with the devil. But whether she believes it, in fact, or not, or she's just uh, displaying uh, an extremely sick sense of humor, um, the fact of her husband's death is not a matter of fiction. And, uh, you know, to anyone who takes this sort of thing seriously, or who takes life seriously in general, uh, it's in appallingly bad taste for her to uh, make reference to uh, her past uh, thusly. And, of course, the, uh, the business with the... Uh, perpetuating her own myth of uh, being a child abuser is something that actually even goes to the heart of uh, all of her publicity. Her, her album, or rather her uh, band name, Hole, uh, supposedly comes from uh, the Greek uh, tragedy Medea, which is a <laughs> tale of child abuse to uh, say the least. So, you know, uh, we're uh, not out to uh, join the legion of people who would uh, uh, raise a great alarm about uh, Satan and music unnecessarily. On the other hand, you know, this weekend is the 58th anniversary of the birth of John Lennon, and uh, even though it's never discussed on, uh, you know, was not discussed in the PBS documentary on Mark David Chapman, and uh, in fact, uh, you know, when, when the ladies from ABC went and did their sleuthing with Mark David Chapman uh, in jail,
uh, at uh, Attica, they did not bring it up with him either, but it's generally considered to be a fairly uh, substantial theory that uh, Chapman was a member of some sort of Christian slash satanic fascination cult, and when someone is that deep into a cult, you never really know who's pushing the buttons on them. Thusly, you know, you do uh, find uh, in the background of the murder of John Lennon a uh, reason to believe that it's not nonsense to consider it an assassination which may have had others in complicity beyond uh, only the head case Mr. Chapman himself. And uh, it is uh, this way with uh, Cobain, of course, with a very wide conspiracy around him. Uh, we'll have a one-hour program following this. Thanks for tuning in, and talk to you later.